Hello, this is Seamus, N7MYW. There are so many bands that we have to operate on as ham operators. Whether you are a technician or an extra class license holder, you have a bounty of frequencies and bands to play around on, communicate with, transfer data with, uh, just so much out there that we can use. Yet there are some of those bands that just don't get enough use. Now one, one band that is one of my favorites that just doesn't get enough use is 220 megahertz. And I've talked about that here before. Um, 220 megahertz just doesn't get just doesn't get enough use. There are lots of radios like the Kenwood D74. There are plenty of other uh, radios with 220 megahertz on them. But I think that actually 220 in parts of the country gets used relatively well. Maybe the major cities, of course. But two other bands that I have really been interested in lately and trying to do more with, 900 megahertz and 1.2 gigahertz, or 1200 megahertz. So the 33 centimeter band and the 23 centimeter band. These two bands just don't get enough use. Now, I know that 1.2 gigahertz, and this particular radio that I have right here, this is the uh, the ICOM. I'm trying to remember the model number actually. I believe the Q a T. Excuse me, it's the T81A. It's right there. Um, if I just read, <laughs> T81A. It's a quad band radio that has six meters, two meters, 70 centimeters, and 1.2 gigahertz, and it's an older radio. Um, it does work okay. Uh, there's one point. Well, there's one watt out on the 1.2 gigahertz portion of this radio. And if I get close enough to the repeater and in line of sight within know, four or five miles of it, I can usually hit the repeater. Problem is, there's nobody on it. I have called out frequently, many many times, and never been able to operate on that repeater. Uh, the only time I've been able to communicate with somebody on 1.2 gigahertz was during the VHF UHF contest and I was able to communicate on Simplex, FM Simplex, but that was because I had set up a schedule to do so. So this radio over here is a Motorola XPR 6580. Absolutely amazing radio. Um, I think that uh, I think Motorola of course makes an incredible radio, so do a lot of other companies for commercial use. But 900 megahertz is just one of those bands that ham operators don't get a chance to utilize very often. Now, granted, larger cities are different. Many hams have taken uh, commercial gear and have made them operate and uh, have the ability to operate both FM and DMR in digital modes on 900 megahertz. This particular model here um, is programmed so that I could use this on DMR and I can use that on FM. Um, right now currently it is programmed with frequencies that allow me to, to do both here in the Portland Vancouver market and still again not much usage. Now the DMR repeaters uh, we have one single DMR repeater that will work on 900 megahertz locally. There are also a couple of FM repeaters. One is interlinked with a couple of other repeaters in the Northwest and in Texas. That repeater does get some use, but mainly not not usage locally. It mainly gets use from the other repeaters, which are 2 meter and 70 centimeter and 220 in different parts of the country. That is why I get to hear people on there, and it's and it's a joy to talk to them. <clears throat> this this particular radio puts out, I believe, two and a half watts and five watts. It could be a little bit higher. But it does an outstanding job. And, and actually, as far as that goes, so does the ICOM on the other bands. Why are these bands so underutilized? Well, part of the reason, of course, for 900 megahertz is that there's just no gear available that's, that flies right off the shelf. So Kenwood, ICOM, Yesu, and Alinko don't make 900 megahertz gear. None of the Chinese manufacturers coming out with radios are making 900 megahertz gear towards ham radio operators. It's all commercial. So hams have taken to 
using these commercial radios and, and programming them so that they will work. Now sometimes you have to use a hex editor in order to make these radios work on 900 megahertz. But when you do and you get them programmed, it's a delightful band to operate and it's fastly becoming something I really enjoy. If 1.2 gigahertz were used more often, instead of just using it for backbones of relays and for the occasional, uh, the occasional club, I think that 1.2 gigahertz would actually be a lot more popular. We currently have four repeaters in the Portland area for 1.2 gigahertz, and I never hear anybody on any of them. And I've tried. 900, a little bit better, but still not very many at all. These are bands that I just don't want to see them go away. I don't want to see them get taken and used by other companies. Now, the, the commercial companies aren't as interested anymore as they used to be, but times can change. Uh, but 900 megahertz, I have to say that uh, if there were a band between these two that I would choose, if, if I could ask a manufacturer, please make radios for it, it would be 900. It's very much characteristically like 70 centimeters, except the frequencies, uh, except the, the propagation used for these can really vary. So it can go through buildings a lot easier, through concrete a little bit better. Now 1.2 gigahertz can also bend, bend the waves a little bit too. Around buildings, you can actually bounce signals off of other metallic objects. Um, they both have some wonderful characteristics, but they just don't get utilized enough. Now ICOM has made repeaters, and so have a couple of other companies, for 1.2 gigahertz. Here again, there are repeaters out there, but nobody's utilizing them. Maybe if the large manufacturers would start producing more handheld radios, people could take their 900 megahertz and their 1.2 gigahertz with them. Uh, currently, the only manufacturer making a 1.2 gigahertz in a handheld that I'm aware of is Alinco with their Tribander. It's a one one watt output, which is fine, but that's it. There's no other, no other manufacturer making that in a handheld. Now, ICOM does make the 9700, and the 9700, which is very similar to the 7300, except that it is the, uh, the uh, VHF, UHF equivalent, it does have 1.2 gigahertz installed in it already. You don't have to add the module. That works. Um, before, it was the Kenwood TS-2000 had the ability to put in the 1.2 gigahertz module. But you had to purchase that module, which was very expensive. 10 watt output, if I remember correctly. So nobody's doing anything with these bands. Uh, I would love to see more, more handhelds come out with it, but problem is, is allocation. These two frequency ranges in these bands, 33 centimeters, 23 centimeters, don't have worldwide allocation. So the manufacturer is not going to feasibly take radios and manufacture them for our market only just to sell a few hundred models. It's not profitable for them. And those companies are out for a profit. And that's okay. That is what they do. Companies are there to make money and that is why they produce these radios. But you also want to make your customers happy and you want to give the customers something that they want to purchase. Um, when ICOM had made this radio way back, I believe this was in the early 90s, it sold relatively well, but I'm, I'm guaranteeing you most of the people that were on there were not using, not using it for 1.2 gigahertz. They were using this radio for the, for the dual band part for 2 meters and 70 centimeters. Um, and, and that's probably where it sold. It didn't, it didn't sell for very long. Uh, of course, Motorola, Motorola radios sell quite frequently, and they constantly are evolving in the commercial realms. And this is an older, an older radio. In fact, you have to have special CPS software, uh, programming software, in order to program Motorola radios and most commercial radios. It's not easy to get. It's very expensive, and you have to have a license or pay hefty, hefty uh, dollars for it different with of course ham radio you can usually get the software to program these things so why why uh, why are these underutilized well you have to have the gear number one and you have to have people who really want to communicate with them what could you maybe say that the cell phone the smartphone has proved to be the death of some of the ham radio bands 
I don't think so. I think a lot of these still get utilized. Sure, we use our smartphones, and smartphones are amazing. I mean, if you think about all of the things that you can do with these smartphones, it's just incredible. But we, we want to utilize our frequencies. 900 megahertz, and usually your frequencies for your repeaters are run around 927, uh, 927, 928, 929, thereabouts. Those are the frequencies that most repeaters are on. And Simplex is, uh, if I remember correctly, 927.50 is the Simplex FM frequency for 900 megahertz. I have actually used that before, and it sounds wonderful. And it, they also have a digital Simplex frequency. And that is wonderful, too. Uh, this particular model, let's see if I can get the light on. That's one of the drawbacks about this radio, is that it doesn't have a light that stays on for long. But if I were to go to a different zone, which is right here, um, I can actually go to a digital... Let's see, where is it at? There is a digital simplex frequency. Works great. I've been able to use this over a couple of miles at least. Pretty impressive, actually. So, now the fellow who helped program this for me, or programmed it for me, um, put in frequencies for the DMR uh, repeater. Also, all of the local repeaters, plus frequencies for the repeaters up north in the corridor between Portland and Seattle and Seattle. And it, and it works. It works beautiful. It's a lovely radio. It's built like a tank. And you can get those on eBay for anywhere from about $100 to $300. You just have to have the software. That's part of the, the issue as to reasons why people aren't purchasing them. If you have the software or somebody does, or your club does, Motorola's are a great way to go. Uh, they also make a couple of other brands out there. Kenwood does some amazing gear. That might be something as well for getting on 900 megahertz. 1.2 gigahertz, you're looking at mainly having to purchase either the current Delinco. I have not actually reviewed that, but I have played with it, had it in the hand, and... and Messed around a little bit with it out at, uh, at Ham Radio Outlet in Portland. And it's not a bad little radio, especially for $249 or $269, whatever it is going for now. That's pretty impressive for a, for a tri-band radio with 1.2 gigahertz. Otherwise, you're looking at older gear. You have to find used gear and to get onto 1.2 gigahertz that way. The great thing about these frequencies, though, is that the antennas are relatively small. Now, granted, you'll see that they have a standard basic longer antenna. Uh, Motorola's antennas are amazing. This antenna came with uh, the ICOM, but it's good for all four bands. Otherwise, if you want to make your own antennas, you certainly can, and they're not very big. That's one of the great things about antenna building for these frequencies, and as far as that goes, for VHF and UHF. So, I really would love to see 900 megahertz get used more often. You, you can find the gear, you can find a way to convert the gear, but wow, how great it would be if we could get the manufacturers or even some of the, uh, the third or fourth place or fifth place or whatever manufacturers, whether no matter where they're at, doesn't matter if it's China, Taiwan, or uh, anywhere else in Southeast Asia or Europe, it just looking at 900 megahertz would be a wonderful band to utilize. And I'm, I'm championing it. I'm trying to really get out there and uh, cheerlead 900 megahertz, 1.2 gigahertz, and always 220. 220 band. There's three bands right there that we can utilize that don't get enough activity. And we don't want to lose them again. Anyway, just wanted to focus a little bit more on 900 megahertz and 1.2 gigahertz and how we really could, could get these back and use them. Uh, I know I haven't moved the camera around a lot. It's just been kind of a stationary thing here, but kind of wanted to just get out there and play around with uh, both of these bands this weekend. Uh, currently, I have this one on my local DMR. I'm going to leave it there all weekend and hopefully uh, scare up a contact or two. If not, I'll go over to the FM repeater and I'll try that. See if you have a 900 megahertz or a 1.2 gigahertz repeater in your area. If you have the gear for it, give it a try. Give a call out. No one's going to hear unless you call. And see if you can uh, see if you can get somebody to talk. What about a net? There you go. There's another opportunity. I'm trying to get a 220 megahertz net going in my own area. 
through my club if possible because we have uh, five or six 220 machines in the local area. So it would be great to get these underutilized bands used and, and working. So, Just a little bit from uh, the N7MYW ham radio desk today. I appreciate you watching. And if you enjoyed this, please hit the thumbs up. And subscribe if you haven't subscribed before. Hit the bell icon if you'd like to have notifications when there's more videos. And let me know in the comments what you think about these three bands. 220. I'll put that radio back down there. 220 megahertz. 900 megahertz. 1.2 gigahertz. Three underutilized bands that sure could use a boost. Thank you for watching. And 73 from N7MYW.